Hi, this presentation briefly reviews the key concepts and main achievements of our most recent publication titled Thermal Shock Resistance of Refractory Composites with Zirconia and Silicon Carbide Inclusions and Illumina Binder, published in the Journal of Ceramics International on March 2018. Traditionally, thermal shock damage in ceramic materials is characterized using various indices that are categorized into two main groups, damage initiation indices, which can tell us when the cracking first takes place, and damage propagation indices, which predict how deep the crack will grow. Here are two important damage initiation indices, R-index for hard shock scenarios, where the bio number or beta is very large, and R-prime index for mild shock scenarios, where the bio number is very small. Also, our third is one of the indices designed to capture damage propagation. These indices are designed to be used in pairs as a comparative design tool. For example, by plotting R versus R prime, we can decide whether the material is more resilient to mild shock or to hard shock. As an instance, when the R value is comparatively large and the R prime value is comparatively small, the material is more resilient to hard shock and less suited for mild shock. Similarly, if we plot R versus R third, we learn how does the material resist crack initiation versus crack propagation. For example, when the R value is comparatively large and the R third value is comparatively small, the material is more resilient to damage initiation and less resilient to damage propagation. Notice that these indices were originally developed for homogeneous ceramics, therefore we may only hypothesize that they can describe the behavior of composite ceramics as well, and then put this ad hoc hypothesis to test. We started with the hypothesis that these thermal shock parameters can adequately characterize the thermal shock response of our composite ceramics. If this is the case, then, then the thermal shock resistance of our castables with silicon carbide inclusions should be superior to that of castables with zirconia inclusions, given their material properties. To test this hypothesis, we manufactured three re uh, refractory composites containing different volume fractions of zirconia and silicon carbide inclusions, dispersed in an alumina matrix. These three compositions were designated as castable zirconia, castable silicon carbide, and castable silicon carbide zirconia. All three of them have alumina matrix, however, the first one contains two types of zirconia inclusions, the second one contains large volume fraction of silicon carbide inclusions, and the last one contains a mix of all. To make easier reference, we create the following abbreviations, CZ, CS, and CSZ. The letter Z refers to zirconia and the letter S refers to silicon carbide. All of the samples of these compositions were manufactured using vibration casting to make samples in multiple sizes and shapes, including cylinders and bars shown in these pictures, which are used for compression and three-point bending tests. We measured crushing strength using Tinea Solson instrument and measured modulus of rupture using NTS instrument in a three-point bending test. We also developed an ultrasonic setup to measure elastic modulus, which is schematically shown here. Thermal conductivity of the matrix material was measured using Thermtest thermal conductivity measurement instrument. An electric furnace was implemented to apply a thermal shock cycle to samples, which comprised of a consecutive heating and cooling profile, or a hot shock followed by a mild shock. We utilized scanning electron microscope, or SEM, to view the microstructure of the samples, both before and after thermal shock cycle. Finally, we measured coefficient of thermal expansion, or CTE, using dilatometer. Here is a summary of our experimental measurements for the three groups of composites, which shows the average value for elastic modulus, crushing strength, and modulus of rupture, both before and after thermal shock. Additionally, by submerging some samples in water, we approximated the minimum percentage of the porosity. 
Finally, since the alumina matrix is a custom-made constituent in all compositions, we separately measured some of the properties of the matrix as shown here. After most of the material properties are measured experimentally, thermal shock indices are calculated. In this graph, the calculated value for mild shock index, R prime, is plotted versus hard shock index, R, for all three compositions. Circles represent the value of these indices for hot shock scenario or sudden temperature rays, and triangles represent those values for cold shock scenario or sudden temperature drop. As expected, all three compositions possess a superior resistance to hot shock as opposed to cold shock. Also, among the three composites, CS has superior resistance to cold shock for both mild and hard shock scenarios. In addition, hot shock resistance of CS seems to be superior for mild shock and comparatively good for hard shock scenario. In conclusion, addition of silicon carbide has enhanced resistance to hot shock and cold shock in both regimes of sudden and gradual temperature change, which affirms the validity of our original hypothesis. We took this idea one step further and for the first time we inspected the variation of these indices due to thermal shock and used them as a material design tool. In this figure, for hot shock results, circles represent pre-shock parameters and triangles represent post-shock parameters. For one thermal shock cycle, CZ has the lowest degradation in indices, but CS shows the best behavior both before and after thermal cycle. For cold shock, CSZ and CS end up in comparable position after one cycle. These results qualify CS as the best candidate compared to the other two compositions for refractory applications where hot shock is applied. Pre-shock and post-shock SEM studies on samples showed that the samples made of matrix material only are more susceptible to thermal shock compared to reinforced composites as expected. In this figure, you see matrix surface cracking due to thermal shock. The micrograph in the middle shows the growth of the crack on the surface, as well as a case of bridging phenomena in that region. The other two micrographs magnify the branch-shaped tip of the crack at the both ends. Other than cracking, matrix may deform in other ways too. Here you see matrix before thermal shock with relatively smooth surface. Here is the same spot on the same sample after thermal shock cycle, with seemingly rougher surface and cavities. Release of the crystalline water as well as microscale ablation can be considered as the main causes of this microstructural change. Moreover, both of these factors can be considered as contributing factors to the observed mass loss. These pictures exemplify the microstructure of the three composites prior to thermal shock. We also perform pre-shock, post-shock microscopy on these composites and concluded that some of the existing cracks may enlarge, some may shrink, and some may initiate due to thermal shock. Based on our SCM observations, we find that the thermal shock damage in these composites is best described as microstructural deformation, which can comprise particle displacement, microcrack initiation, microcrack propagation or shrinkage, and matrix loss, where matrix loss can be caused by the loss of crystalline water as well as microscale ablation. You can find out a lot more about this research by reading the full paper available at the links provided in the description. Also, please don't forget to use the correct citation of this work. Thank you very much for your attention.